Now let's get going folks and we'll begin like we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid Monologue. Oh, so it ain't so. The creepy quasi-romance of the century is apparently on the rocks. Yes, it's a breakup surely on par with Rhett Butler and Scarlett O'Hara. Um, okay, would you believe Robin Givens and Mike Tyson? I speak of Bertie Bethel, who has ended her relationship with Omar Khadr, you know, our little homegrown Islamist who is currently suing the federal government for breaching his constitutional rights. Bertie, along with colleague John Norris, well, they were Omar's legal dream team, but not anymore. And who saw this shocker coming? That's because Bertie has been one of the biggest public apologists for little Omar. According to her, Cotter isn't some jihadist jackass. He's merely a misunderstood, lovable Canadian kid. You think I jest, folks? Well, just consider an astonishing interview that ran in a recent issue of Toronto Life. Indeed, in the Q&A, Bertie almost comes across as a caricature, an upwardly mobile, progressive, bleach-blonde litigator who has never met a crook she didn't think was innocent, uh, as long as the client had cash up front for the retainer, that is. In fact, I think we might have a clip of Bertie in action. One of the reasons I wanted to come here tonight was to discuss our future. Of course. I plan on running for office someday. Warner. I think we should break up. What? L. If I'm going to be a senator, I need someone serious. I'm seriously in love with you. I love you. Liar! This is the type of girl that Warner wants to marry. A law student. Going to Harvard is the only way I'm going to get the love of my life back. For my admissions essay, Action. I'm going to tell all of you why I'm going to make an amazing lawyer. I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. Actually, I, I think that was the trailer from Legally Blonde. Can you tell the difference? I can't tell the difference, folks. In any event, the navel-gazing article in Toronto Life is as astonishing as it is nauseating. The interviewer is Malcolm Johnson, who I suspect is fresh out of Carleton's journalism program. Every question is a lob ball, and every answer is lovingly hit out of the park by little Omar's now former legal eaglet. But what's truly beyond the pale is that both interviewer and interviewee seem to be working on the presumption that there was absolutely no question about Cotter's innocence. He's just a kid who got screwed by the system. Some of Bertie's answers are perversely ironic. For example, when she's asked, what do you talk about with Omar? She answers, quote, at the start, he often asks about the news and what's happening in my life. My dad died recently and I started running. I guess it was a way for me to deal with my grief. He thought it was so cool that Toronto practically shuts down for marathons. I've asked him if he'll run with me one day. I'm sure he'd kick my butt. Well, isn't that special, folks? It seems little Omar's solicitor practically has a crush on the guy. And when Bertie says, I'm sure he'd kick my butt, she doesn't know the half of it. I mean, it's been documented that during his time in Gitmo Bay, Cotter was disgustingly sexist and racist towards those prison guards who were visible minority females. Luckily, Omar was kept behind bars like the animal he is, then there really would be a butt kite kicking otherwise. Still, my heart goes out to Bertie regarding the passing of her father, but wouldn't the obvious follow-up question be, how do you feel about the fact that Christopher Spears' children are growing up without their father, thanks to Omar Cotter? Oh, but no dice, folks. Instead, Johnson's next question is, what are Omar's hopes beyond getting out? And the answer, by the way, is, quote, he wants to be normal, pay his bills, go shopping. He wants to go to school and eventually study medicine. He wants a book bag because that's what he associates with school. Isn't that sweet? It gets better, folks. Next question. Omar's 26. In some ways, is he still a child? And her answer, well, I think all males are immature. But Omar is very wise. And I keep marveling at his gentle spirit. He also has a remarkable emotional maturity. When he's scared or sad, he copes by reading or doing his homework. 
Omar has been reading one book from every province. For Ontario, he read In the Skin of a Lion. He liked Who Has Seen the Wind by W.O. Mitchell. I'm from Saskatchewan, so he asked if I spent a lot of time in fields as a little girl. Folks, I swear, I'm not making any of this up. Then we get into shoot the messenger department question. The Sun TV pundit Ezra Levant believes Cotter has duped you into thinking he's harmless. Is that possible? And Bertie's answer, dupe me? Well, Levant should meet my mother. She'll tell him I'm not easily duped. And for Levant to draw wild conclusions, having never met Omar, is ridiculous. This is my job. I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I deal with accused murderers and drug dealers all the time. Uh, sorry, Bertie, most people have never met Osama bin Laden either, but it's fair to assume based on the evidence, he was a pretty insidious individual too. One of the last questions pertains to little Omar's kinfolk, but in Bertie's eyes, they aren't members of Canada's Al-Qaeda family. Oh no, they're practically the Brady Bunch wearing beekeeper costumes. Question, is Omar's mother as militant and angry as media reports suggest? And Bertie's answer, I found her to be incredibly warm. I'm Ukrainian, so I'm used to family members who are very tactile, in your face. Lots of, why aren't you eating? You're not fat enough. Lots of touching, even my flab. I found her strangely familiar in that way. Boo, sorry, Bertie. You can put a liter of lipstick on a pig. It's still a pig. Bottom line, after finishing the Q&A article, I found myself confused. Who do I have the most contempt for? Omar Cotter, his lawyer, the pseudo-journalist who conducted the interview for Toronto Life, or Toronto Life for publishing such borderline pornography? I still don't have an answer, but one wonders who Omar's next legal mouthpiece will be, given that things seem to be going along so swimmingly well with Bertie and Omar. But then again, that's Amore, and that's the Menzoid Monologue.